Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master, taking the word of God and making practical application, giving us from the Bible's perspective, important news we can use. I want to thank you so much for joining me this week in a week in which I think we're going to get some great points to ponder. And that is this week, our focus will be on the fear of failure. The first part of the week, I want to talk about fear. The latter part of the week, I want to talk to you about failure and how to um, face your failures, how to rebound from your failures. In fact, how to benefit from your failures from a biblical perspective. And we'll look at the end of the week at some, some of the great failures we don't tend to call them failures, but uh, based on how we usually define failure, they would be classified as failures. But uh, as we shall see, you're only a failure when you refuse to learn from that failure and move on beyond the failure. Never allow your emotions to get parked in a place that is unhealthy to be. Don't park your emotions anywhere. You've seen signs perhaps uh, no parking signs. Maybe we need to put some no parking signs in our minds and say, you know what, that was a bad experience. That was a failure, but I don't need to park my emotions there. And we're going to talk about how we can get moving again beyond failure and how failure often can become the catalyst for tremendous success, the fear of failure. But first of all, let's set this week up by first exploring fear. What does the Bible say about fear? Interestingly enough, um, fear is not something that is viewed in the Bible as something negative, something negative. In fact, it is something that God has put in us. It's part of being human. In fact, fear is like an alarm system in our body that when we are in circumstances or situations that can be harmful to us or dangerous to us, uh, well, um, something is triggered in our emotions. Um, it's almost like um, our this natural built-in alarm system goes off, hormones gets released into our blood system, uh, and then our our, our internal system says we must do one of two things. We must either fight or we must flight. In other words, fear is put in us for purposes of self-protection. If you're a hunter and you're rattling through the woods and there happens to be a rabbit nearby, let me tell you what that rabbit will do. Well, that rabbit will run. And what motivates that rabbit to run is fear. What keeps the rabbit alive is the fear of the hunter. And God puts certain um, fear impulses in us, or we're born with them, in order to keep us alive. Now, for those who say, well, fear is something evil, then think about the things that we do just naturally because we are fearful of certain consequences. Um, why don't you keep your money out in the open? Why don't you just take all of your money and put it in a, in a pile and uh, put it out in, in your front yard? Well, you don't do that because you have a fear that somebody would take that money. So what do you do? You put your money in a, in a bank, use common sense because you are afraid that somebody will take it. Why do you pay your taxes by April the 15th? Is it because you love the government that much? Oh no, because you have a fear of being indicted for um, a tax evasion. Uh, why um, do we have something called the United Nations? We have the United Nations because there is a fear that we could experience global war. So to avert that, um, we, we have the United Nations. But it is, it is the fear of certain things that keeps us healthy. Like all good things that God has given us, we often abuse them or we extend them in ways that God never intended for them to do, 
for us to extend. For example, take, for example, fire. Fire is healthy. Fire is good. Fire, uh, you can cook with fire. You can warm yourself with fire. Uh, so fire has a good purpose as long as fire stays in the fireplace. Uh, or, but if the fire gets out of the fireplace and gets on the drapes and on the sofa, then that's not a good thing. Um, water is good. We can swim in water. We can drink water. We can shower and bathe in water. But too much water, and you will drown. And the same thing with fear. Fear in its proper place is good. In fact, Proverbs 1 and 7 says this about fear. Proverbs 1 and 7 says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Um, fear might mean that where fear could be a, mean a proper respect for things is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. So fear is not something that is um, that the Bible condemns. The Bible condemns what is called irrational fears or phobia. Now, what is a phobia? A phobia is if, if fear is an alarm system that goes off when we are in serious danger or when we have to be alerted to something that we need to take care of, um, then that's good. But imagine if the alarm system goes off 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you just are having panic attacks or you're constantly dreading something or you constantly are thinking something in some impending doom is upon you and you're just nervous and all jittery. Those type of phobias are not what God wills for your life or my life. That's not God's will. Uh, in fact, we're told um, by psych psychologists that there are over a hundred different irrational fears called phobias. Let me list some of them for you. You heard of them. Acrophobia is a fear of height. Claustrophobia is a fear of closed places. Agrophobia uh, is a fear of open places. Neophobia is a fear of the new new, like technology. Many of us have a fear of technology. Um, we don't realize it. We, we like the old way of doing things because we just don't want to adjust to new technology. That is neophobia. Pathophobia, which is what the, the billionaire Howard Hughes has, is a fear of disease. So you're constantly washing your hands because you have a fear of disease. Photophobia is a fear of light. Listen to this homophobia what's homophobia homophobia is a fear of sermons uh, or somebody preaching to you somebody oh i don't want to hear this because you're sermonizing you're preaching to me and some people have what's called glossophobia glossophobia is a fear of public speaking S over a hundred different irrational phobias and fears and whenever you are a prisoner of your phobias with all your fears and your fears become phobias then there are things you won't attempt to do because phobia keeps you in a limited corner of possibilities. And no one wants to live in the limited corner of possibilities. Now, look, God has an answer for your fears, for your phobias. And the opposite of phobia or fear is faith. Faith in God. Faith in God. The good news about fear is the Lord will give you the faith you need to be the master of your fears and not the victim of your fears. If God be for you, who then can be against you? God does not want you in that corner of limited possibilities. God wants you to experience the full range of possibilities that God has ordained for you, but you will never, you will never experience them if you become a victim, if you allow yourself to become the victim of phobias. I love the scripture in Psalm 34, verse four. It's a promise. And I'll leave you with this. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all of my fears. In other words, God moved me through faith, from fear through faith to something that everybody needs to be the person God intended for them to be. Let me, here's the formula. God freed me from my fears. 
He said, I prayed to the Lord, which means he had faith. So he freed me from my fears as I prayed to the Lord, prayed to the Lord. He answered me by my faith and freed me from my fears. So I have gone through faith from fear, here it is, to confidence, to confidence. And success is always equal and commensurate to the confidence that you have. Uh, no confidence, no achievement. Little confidence, little achievement. Great confidence, great achievement. Let's read that scripture together one more time. I'm reading it, but I want you to read it out loud as we close. Let's go. I pray to the Lord. He answered me. He freed me from all my F-E-A-R-S, fears, F-E-A-R, false evidence, A, appearing are real. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today and bless this journey we will begin as we talk about the fear of failure. I pray, O oh Lord, whoever heard this teaching today, that they would begin to internalize it, to call upon you, and that you will free them from irrational fears. Oh Lord, I pray that while we cannot do anything about what has passed, I pray that the rest of our life will be the best of our life as we live a life of faith and adventure. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with me on another powerful point to ponder. And look, if you don't have a church home, I'd love to invite you to become a part of the St. Stephen Church family. You do not have to live in Louisville, Kentucky. We wish you did live in Louisville, but you don't have to live in Louisville to become a part of St. Stephen Church. You just have to have a need to be in fellowship with other brothers and sisters, not simply because of what the church can provide you with, but there's some gift that you may have, some counsel, some ability, some counsel. You might have a gift to counsel or encourage young people or to work with seniors. And, we're, and even if you're out of the city, state, or nation, you can still become a part, an active part of the church uh, through our online ministry. So contact us here, St. Stephen Church, New Start at ssclive.org. And we intentionally named uh, the email uh, site New Start because we do believe that everybody needs a new start, a fresh beginning. And uh, so you can get that. Call us and email us here at St. Stephen Church. We will get back with you. New Start at ssclive.org. But peace and blessings upon you. May you have a blessed week. I'm looking forward to this week as we talk about overcoming the fear of failure. But until then, during COVID-19, don't forget uh, to remember the protocol. And that is stay safe, stay sane. And if you can, stay home. I will see you tomorrow. Have a blessed rest of the day.